Steve Burdett here welcoming you to another episode of Axis Tech Videos. Today we're going to be talking about the H.264 compression codec. H.264 is the most efficient compression codec available today. Capable of reducing file sizes 80% compared to Motion JPEG, it has become today's standard of choice. The engineers designed it to address the inefficiencies that are found in previous compression standards. This compression is the product of different standardizing organizations working together for the first time. Already utilized in mobile phones, digital video players, and cloud storage, H.264 is anticipated to be more widely accepted than any previous standard. Plus, the increase for higher resolution and faster frame rate makes lowering bitrate and file size the challenge which H.264 handles better than any other codec. To better understand H.264, we first need to understand compression and codecs. Compression is the removal and reduction of redundant information by applying a pair of algorithms. The algorithms work together by coding and decoding a video. H.264, Motion JPEG, and MPEG-4 are all examples of a codec and use compression. However, these codecs are not compatible with one another. Within H.264, there are different profiles which offer varied capabilities and features. As long as the coder conforms to the standard's format and decoder, it can implement a variety of features that are defined within the standard. IP cameras and video encoders often implement a baseline profile because it requires the lowest processing power to perform. This is important in real-time surveillance. In 2012, with the release of the ArtPEC-4 chip, Axis also began to implement a main profile for increased bandwidth and storage savings. We're going to talk about the difference between these profiles coming up shortly. Depending on the profile, different types of frames may be used. Let's break down the three types of H.264 frames. The first frame in sequence will always be an I or intracoded frame. Now intra is a prefix that means within, so these frames are independently coded and don't reference information from other frames. In fact, they are the reference points for other frames. But because they code the entire scene, they require a higher bitrate. However, because they are intracoded, they also use less processing power compared to other frames. These iframes are similar, but not identical to the ones in Motion JPEG, which is compiled exclusively of intracoded frames. The next frame will be a P, or predictive frame. Now this is an intercoded frame, meaning that it references information in other frames. P frames also use temporal compression to code the changes between the previous and current frame, like this blue circle here. They are also partially predicted or composed of matching blocks that can be found in that previous frame, like this red square here. If a match is found, the data is not coded and not transmitted. In doing this, P frames are able to reduce their bitrate size compared to the I frame. Lastly, there are B or bidirectional frames. Now these are like P frames because they reference the information that came before them. However, take it one step further and reference the information that follows. Now this is more processor intensive and can induce higher levels of latency while encoding. The baseline profile commonly used in IP surveillance does not utilize B frames, only the I and P frames. This minimizes processor demand. Technically, the main profile mentioned earlier does use B frames. However, as also mentioned before, while the decoder and format must conform to the standard, the encoding algorithm is flexible with different features. These are decided by the camera manufacturer. Most often, within the security camera industry, manufacturers utilize key features of the main profile without including B frames. This provides the efficiency of a more complex profile without using excessive processing power. Finally, there are predetermined number of frames before the sequence restarts itself with another iframe. This is called a group of video or a gov length. Some vendors also call it a group of pictures. This is an example of a gov length of three. Each new gov length begins with an iframe for the following frames to reference. Along with incorporating different types of frames, H.264 applies other methods of encoding to optimize savings. Together with temporal compression, H.264 applies spatial compression, or grouping pixels into 16 by 16 macro blocks to improve coding efficiencies. H.264 can also separate blocks into sub-blocks 
based on pixel values using quad tree decomposition. This also improves the accuracy of prediction, which is matching blocks based on already coded pixel values in previous frames. Other codecs, like Motion JPEG, also utilize macro blocks, but not to the same efficiency, as seen here with the help of an in loop deblocking filter to smooth the sharp edging of macro blocks. H.264 handles high compression levels noticeably better. We have discussed how H.264 uses temporal compression to track and code changes. It goes further using a method called block based motion to search different locations for matching data. Let's look at our diagram. The object which has changed is the same object just in a new location. So this will only code the information on where to find the data in the previous frame and not all the data together. However, in the third frame, because the color has changed, this is new data which needs to be coded. H.264 also uses prediction in iframes called intra-prediction. While Motion JPEG also uses this, H.264 does it more efficiently. We will demonstrate this by setting a gov length of 1 and comparing with Motion JPEG. While these frames remain independently coded, they recognize similar pixel values within themselves. If a matching value is found nearby in a block of already encoded pixels, it will be tagged and not coded. This furthers bitrate reduction. We have discussed the many ways H.264 intelligently saves on bitrate. However, it is also important to understand the trade-offs of this codec. All of the advanced techniques that we've talked about today require processing power. And depending on your viewing platform, this can tax your CPU or your GPU. And keep in mind that latency can increase if your system is overtaxed. This is the result of trying to encode, compress, transmit, receive, decompress, decode, and then display in real time. One reason you might use Motion JPEG is to help reduce the demand on your processor. Axis offers both of these codecs in their products, making them more easy and flexible to use. Overall, H.264 presents a huge step forward in the world of video compression technology. Its techniques enable more efficient compression and prediction with resilience to errors. It also provides new possibilities by allowing for higher quality video, frame rate, and resolution at outstanding bit rates. And with H.265 arriving, we can expect to see even more improvements in the